Yep, recording out. Okay. Okay. See where we are. Welcome to United Church of Proctor. We come together today to hear the word of God as it is provided by the ELCA's resource called Worship in the Home, found at blogs.elca.org backslash worship. Thank you to all the readers today in order of their appearance. And I have, I'm going to have to bring this up because uh, I'm reading from an old one. Actually, I don't know the actual order of appearance because I don't have that there. So um, uh, thank you to Pastor Judy Anderson Bauer and musician Dennis Palm, as each of them will be sharing their faith through the word of the music, respectively. Do we have any announcements today? Uh, and I have quite a few. Um, I can give you the, the readers today. Thank you. Uh, Karen Nolan, uh, Larry Summer, Paul Hauschel, uh, Dan Sarala, and Janice Anderson. Um, the announcements I have today are, are um, Two are sort of public service announcements. Um, please remember to be voting. And this, because this is a new thing, I want to, to um, highlight it today. If you have an absentee ballot and you still have it in your possession, do not put it in the mail. The new ruling this week says all mail in ballots that are received after election day, November 3rd, will not be counted, will not. And it's not a sure thing that if you put it in the mail tomorrow, it will get there. So please, if you still have an absentee ballot, you should hand deliver it to the courthouse. There is still early voting tomorrow at the courthouse in Duluth, at the St. Louis County Courthouse, from eight in the morning until five in the afternoon. Um, also, please, I want to highlight my newsletter article for this month, and please be careful these next few days, with um, because there the FBI has said there is a disinformation campaigns going on. So please. Pay attention to that and don't share information until you're sure that it is confirmed. Um, also, I want you to be aware that, um, <clears throat> that the, the COVID virus is spreading rapidly in our area. Dr. Um, Michael Osterholm from the University of Minnesota describes this as a blizzard warning. The Minnesotans, we all know what to do in a blizzard. We all know that that means you hunker down and you wait it out. And he said that's the kind of time we are in now. Not only because we don't want to put ourselves at risk, but because we don't want to put anybody else at risk. So please, please continue to be careful with that. Um, I also am offering come December, um, a study of the book, The Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, the classic Christmas story. We're gonna be doing that Wednesdays from um, at one o'clock in the afternoon. These books which have the study in them are available for five bucks. Please let me know if you would like to do that because um, uh, I will order those, but I need that order in by the 15th of November. Um, please remember that we will be celebrating Holy Communion today, so please have uh, bread and wine or juice and crackers available so that uh, you can celebrate communion with us today. Remember your offerings to send those in to the church office or to contribute online. The work of the church continues. Please remember to mute yourself when you are not speaking. Prayer concerns for this day. This is All Saints Sunday, the day we remember all those who have lived and died in faith. 
And so our prayer concerns for today for healing, uh, Claudia Ganucci will be having surgery this week. I'd also like us to remember um, a, a colleague who has died of COVID, Pastor Jeff Walther, who is the Missouri Synod pastor, was the Missouri Synod pastor in ESCO. His congregation had opened and was conducting services in the sanctuary and he contracted COVID, was in ICU for many weeks and has died. And so we grieve with him and with his family and with his congregation uh, of St. Matthew's Lutheran in ESCO. Um, in addition to um, the other uh, prayer concerns, we will be praying for those in our congregation who have died this year. Glenna Bennett also died this year. And I wanna add her, I believe the best, we, the best information we have is that she died about two weeks ago, um, but we have not heard anything about any kind of service. And I want to close the, the announcements this morning with a letter from our presiding bishop Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. I'm gonna read just portions of the letter that she issued um, two days ago. She says, this coming November, this coming Sunday, November 1st at 4 p.m. Eastern, that would be three hour time. She said, I will join many other religious leaders in the Holding On To Hope National Prayer Service to be held at the National Cathedral in Washington, DC. Please join me for this special occasion to pray for the good of our nation on the eve of election day. Even as we pray, we are called to participate in our nation's electoral process as one way God works through us to love and serve our neighbor. Our vote is a choice about what will make our society a more just, more whole community where human dignity is honored and rights are upheld. Throughout our church, many are experiencing heightened anxiety around the 2020 election. I confess that I feel it too. Elections often raise tensions, but this season, more than half of Americans say they are stressed over the future of our nation. We are beset by negative ads, targeted by misinformation campaigns, and worried about reports of foreign interference. She continues, but as an American, I am hopeful. Commitment to the common good is embedded in the ideals expressed in our nation's founding documents. And she says, as a member of Christ's church, I am hopeful. We are stewards of public life for the common good. It is imperative that we allow the election process to take place and ensure that every voice is heard and every vote is counted. Our church is speaking up on the importance of free and fair elections. And then Elizabeth Eaton invites us to pray. So will you pray with me at this time? O oh God, where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Help us in these days to elect trustworthy leaders, participate in wise decisions for our common life, and serve our neighbor. Bless those we elect, that our nation may grow toward peace among ourselves and be a blessing to other nations of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us worship on this All Saints Sunday. I will share my screen so you can easily follow along let us begin our service with the prayer of the day.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for today is from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessed, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these? robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them they will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Are we on? Yeah. In the book of Psalm, Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord. For those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. O oh Lord, you redeem the life of your servant, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. The second reading is from the book of John, chapter 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. 
Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. All right, the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Uh, 5 verses 1 through 12. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom heaven, of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We can hardly avoid knowing in these days that we are surrounded by so much death. Those hurt by the coronavirus, those killed by the violence of terrorism and war, our own beloved dead. And we ourselves are often afraid. All Saints Sunday comes with these texts to speak life and comfort with all the children of God, with all the baptized, living and dead, with our own congregation, with all the unknown and unheralded ones, who in making peace and showing mercy bore witness to God. With all of them, we sing to God and to the Lamb of God. That Lamb, Jesus Christ, is himself the most profound example of all the values praised in the Beatitudes. We are washed and saved in his blood. Now we will undertake again to live in the spirit of those values, joy, mercy, simplicity. And this week in civic responsibility, we will pray to elect public officials who themselves manifest something of, our, of that spirit. Let us remember all the saints who have oh, served the church. Me. Nope, nope, sorry, this is, this is me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace from God our creator and from Jesus the Savior. Amen. And before I start, I want to warn all of you that my internet has been a little bit uh, shaky. So I may cut out, I hope not, but if it happens, I will go out and come back. Um, as quickly as I can. Olga never talked. Day after day, she sat in her wheelchair in the nursing home, always in the same place, always out of everyone's way. Olga never gave anybody ever any trouble. I know this because she was also often one of the women I took care of when I worked as a nurse's aide when I was in college. We speculated 
on what had happened to her that caused her such grief that she would not speak. Because the doctor said she was capable of physical speech. But Olga never made a sound. Cold or heat, pain or pleasure, pea soup or roast turkey, nothing ever got a rise out of her. Nothing could ever break her rock solid face. Not tears, not laughter, nothing. And we wondered, we wondered what had caused her such pain that she would stop speaking altogether. Could it have been a husband's faithful, faithlessness or a child's death or a sister's murder? We could only wonder because no one ever came to visit Olga, not once, not ever. One day as I was brushing her long gray hair down her back, I noticed the only jewelry she had, the only thing of interest in her drab hand-me-down wardrobe. And it was a small golden cross which hung around her neck and which she would sometimes finger. And Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Across the ocean, many centuries earlier than that, lived another woman. Her name was Perpetua. She was a young mother, her child only a few days old when the soldiers came to take her away to prison. With her went her friend, Felicity, who was herself heavy with child. It was a crime at that time for them to confess the name of Jesus. The Roman authorities assumed that these two young mothers wouldn't last long in the harshness of prison life, that they would soon see reason and renounce their faith. They did not. And so they were condemned to die in the arena. Felicity's baby was born just days before the sentence was going to be carried out. And so together, these two young mothers, one black, one white, both of them only 17 years old, were led into the ring. They were gored repeatedly by a maddened heifer, and finally, they were beheaded. And Jesus said, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Years after Perpetua and Felicity were martyred, there was a carefree young rich boy named John, whose parents gave him everything he wanted. As a young man, he gaily went off to fight in his country's war to do his duty and to be a hero but the war changed him. When he came home, his family and friends didn't know him anymore. He didn't care about the family business or profit or riches. He spent his time sitting in a field, listening to birds and smelling flowers. And people said he was crazy. Then he started to rebuild the broken down church at the edge of town and people were afraid of him. And then when other young men and women went out to help him, people were angry at him. He lived the rest of his life as a poor man. And today we remember him by his nickname, Francis from the town of Assisi. And Jesus said, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Three stories of three saints of God. Some of them like Francis, maybe you've heard of before. Some like Olga, I don't think anybody had ever heard of. These and millions and millions more are the saints of God, those who are our ancestors in faith. So on this All Saints Day, who is it that you remember as your ancestor in the faith? 
maybe a mother, a father, a grandmother, a grandfather, a Sunday school teacher, or maybe a neighbor? Who are the people that you have known who have reflected God's love to you? Now, being a saint doesn't mean they were perfect, not by a long stretch. They weren't, we aren't, nobody is. But a saint means that we are just all of us imperfect vessels of God's love. We are, we are cracked pots, okay? We are beautiful, wonderful wrecks, as Emilio Estevez says, all of us, saints and sinners, every one of us, a little of each. We are all beautiful wrecks that the light of God sometimes can shine through. So today, I'm remembering my parents. They died 10 years ago within just 12 days of each other. They were not perfect people, not at all. My dad could be bossy and mean sometimes. My mom could be passive aggressive sometimes. But they loved me as best they could. And they were still saints, still people who helped to nurture the faith in my life. Now, my dad was never much of a church guy, but he helped me think about God and faith. My mom was church librarian for 10 years and she showed me what prayer was like. So today I give thanks for them and for all the others whose lives here have ended and who live now forever with God. For Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Our memories of our ancestors in the faith are what helps us continue in faith as we remember their lives. When things get tough, like this extraordinary year of 2020, when we feel like just giving up, we remember how God was part of the lives of those who came before us, how God helped them through their tough times. And then maybe our hearts are a little braver. Maybe we have the strength to get up and do what needs to be done. We can do these hard things this year, this extraordinary year. The challenges we face are probably different than theirs, but the God we serve, the God who gives us brave hearts, that doesn't change. Even as we face this fraught time, we can draw strength from those who live now forever with God. For Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And blessed are all who have lived and died in God. And dear friends in Christ, blessed are you. Blessed are you for your faith and hope and love. Amen. Dennis, we can't hear anything. Have you got music on? Not yet. Okay.
Can we share the screen for the prayers? There we go. Thank you. Let's remember all the saints who have served the church and the world as we offer our prayers to God. Responding to each petition with the words, save us from, our, from all our troubles. We praise you, O God, for all the saints who have ministered in your church. Give us now, we pray, pastors, deacons, teachers, and lay leaders who will guide your people in the way of truth. Bless all who minister during this difficult time. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Save us from all our troubles. We praise you, O oh God, for all the saints who lived in communion with animals, with the earth and the seas. I lost his audio. Dan, I think he froze up. Um, I'll just continue with him there. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Save us from all our troubles. We praise you, O oh God, for all the saints who strove for equity and justice. Guide us during this election week that those who seek the common good will be elected. Protect those who vote and preserve our nation from all forms of civil discord. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Save us from all our troubles. We praise you, O oh God, for all the saints who worked to renew society. Give us now persons who will struggle against prejudice, lethargy, and evil and will work to improve the lives of others. Hear our prayer, O oh God, save us from all our troubles. We praise you, O oh God, for all the saints who ministered to the needy. Give us now people who will care for those in need. We pray for those in need, the war-torn, the unemployed, those who experience discrimination those who are weighed down with anxiety, and those whose needs are known only to you. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Save us from all our troubles. We praise you, O oh God, for all the saints who nurse the sick, support physicians, nurses, and all medical staff, especially as they confront the continuing crisis of coronavirus. Hear our prayer, O oh God, save us from all our troubles. We praise you, O oh God, for all the faithful who have suffered in body, mind, and spirit. Give wholeness to the sick, especially to those with the coronavirus. Send your healing power on those whose names we call out to you now. We remember today, especially Claudia. Hear our prayer, O oh God, save us from all our troubles. We praise you, O oh God, for all the saints, both the famous and the forgotten, who lived in faith and now live in you. We thank you, O oh God, especially for those we name now. We thank you for the life of Pastor Jeff Walther and all the saints of United Lutheran who have died this past year. Bring us at the last with them to be in your triune presence. Hear our prayer, O oh God, save us from all our troubles. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to you, O oh God, forever and ever. Amen. And now as we come to celebrate Holy Communion, would you please make sure you have your bread and wine or juice and crackers available.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good friends, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood and blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. God's peace is with you always. Amen. Let's try that again. Let us yeah. pray. A glory to you, O oh God, for your creative world, making and mending all things, evoking the cosmic hymn of praise, and singing a love song for your beloved, your beloved, your vineyard, your flock, your people. With all creation we sing. Glory, glory. Blessed are you for all for your liberating world. Speaking to Moses and the prophets encountered in the Gospels and proclaimed in the assembly. Your freedom, your forgiveness, and life for the world. With the whole world, with the whole world, we say blessing, blessing. Holy are you, O God, for your living world among us wherever we gather, welcoming everyone to your feast and with grace and generosity bringing to the earth the kingdom of heaven with the saints and angels we cry holy holy clothe us in your loving spirit flowing from the crucified and risen one and keep us awake to your presence in the people and places you call us to serve glory praise and blessings are yours holy god now and forever amen amen and now the blessing. May the God of all creation in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign savior and spirit be with you today and always, amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sorry I couldn't scroll. Dan was supposed to. That's okay. That's okay. Okay, everyone. Um, we can be done recording. Stop recording. And then we can come off mute. When did I go off the line? I didn't realize it. Yeah, sometime in the middle of the prayers, Dan. Was it? Oh, I'm sorry yeah. I didn't notice that. That's okay. I looked, up, I looked up and I saw 